All right. I think we may go ahead and get started because I know we filled our time last time as well. So uh, I'd like to welcome everybody. Ooh, I got to hit record. Or that's why I have my sticky note record. Uh, da, da, da. It is recording. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get, get uh, continue with this session, uh, kind of the second round. And again, our goal of this session is to talk about kind of everything check-in. And so this would be kind of from this, uh, the schedule of check-in at our fairs uh, to the different species. And we'll talk maybe a little bit about health checks uh, came up. And so we can incorporate some of that. Uh, just looking at what's used for scales or multiple species using the same scale, what we often can have a different scale maybe for cattle, but also other species may use that one too. So again, just want some general discussion in this area to, for us to learn from each other on. And, um, and so to really help us kind of kick off some of the information, uh, we have uh, uh, Corinne Patterson from Lyon County. Uh, also, Brian Reese will be joining and helping. Uh, those two work together a lot in this particular area and provide some information, as well as Janet Harkness of the West Plains District. And West Plains is a combination of Finney and Scott County. So they have two different sides of the state represented uh, here in this session. So maybe to start off, Janet, do you want to kind of kick us off and talk a little bit about some of the check-in areas and, and topics? Um, and then what we'll, what we'll plan to do for everybody that's on, we'll have Janet and Corinne both talk first. They'll kind of go through their information. Then we'll circle back for specific questions. And it'll work best, honestly, once we get to that point, I'll kind of get us, get us started. But to have you unmute and ask your question directly, as well as if you have something, a follow-up, or, hey, this is what we do, or this is what works, or that we tried this, and please don't do this because it was a disaster. Uh, that's as important as anything, and we want to encourage that information. So with that, Janet, we'll turn things over to you. Thank you, Joel. Um, so up in Scott County, um, we do have um, a, something that we send out two to three weeks ahead of time. It's called a fair check-in procedure sheet, and we have that broken down by species. And it actually gives a date and timeline of when animals are to come in, how they're to come in, where they go, um, when to check in, when the weigh-in is um, with that. And it, it kind of keeps everybody in order because we do use um, two different sets of scales up in Scott County. We use a larger set that we run our sheep and goats through um, Monday evening from six to seven. Um, our beef come in from seven to eight and follow the small animals um, and get weighed in as well. Um, our swine have a portable scales that we weigh right in the hog barn. Um, they weigh from six to seven, but we do have a requirement for 2022 that they are arrived by five o'clock no later than five to get checked in. And they all have to go through the wash rack before they hit the scales just to get that extra mud off, um, especially for tags um, and um, ear notches so that we can read all of them. But we did have a problem last year with hogs being exceptionally dirty um, when we went to weigh them. Um, and then it, it always seems that, you know, we're, we're fairly flexible in our time, but it seemed like um, it took a little bit longer to get the hogs weighed. So we kind of tightened up their window um, for getting everything done. Um, so that is, is kind of what we do in Scott County. Our scales, our little one is portable. We can move it from barn to barn. Our larger scale that the sheep and goats and um, beef weigh on, that just is covered by um, just a, an open shed. Um, and they all have digital scale heads that we read off of. Our superintendents help the agents, myself and Renee Tuttle, our ag agent, weigh in. They will call weights. Um, we keep a paper copy of the weights. We write them down. We also put them into the, the computer um, to create a spreadsheet. And as soon as we're done weighing, the superintendents and the agents are breaking classes um, for our shows. And down in Finney County, um, we do use fair entry, so we kind of keep track of everything through that, um, our tags, our entries. We will print those sheets. Um, we create those sheets by family so that when folks come in to go through vet check and to um, get weighed in, we can just put their weights down right by family and go right in order. So we're not jumping around. Um, I do not recommend printing their, their show cards and trying to fill out their show cards while you're weighing in. Um, apparently, that was a procedure that hadn't been done before, but it's, it's so much easier just to have the regular um, sheets printed out, not show cards to get through. Um, down in Finney County, um, we do weigh in. We, we had a modified fair last year, so we did weigh in nightly. Um, the animals would go through health check, they would come in, they'd weigh in their time period, 
And then we'd start breaking classes for the show the next morning or that evening. So that was a good lesson in, in using efficient time efficiently um, to get that together. We've also gone to Facebook Messenger groups um, for our families. Our superintendents have created those for both open and 4-H families to keep everybody kind of up to the minute updated on everything that we've got going on, especially with the changes that have come around in 2022. Um, so I would really recommend communication and having um, a good conversation with your superintendents and your volunteers ahead of time so that everybody knows what their job is once we get there to weigh in um, and, and to make that work very efficiently. Um, we do have a vet that will check animals before they set foot in the barn down in Finney County. We have had that in the past in Scott County, but our superintendents this year felt that they would rather do um, a superintendent health inspection as animals come off the trailer before they even hit the barns. And if there's a question, that questionable animal will stay on the trailer. And we have a veterinarian on call um, for those questionable cases when we do check in. Um, so that that's pretty much what we do. Love to hear from everyone else. All right, Corinne, maybe have you kind of uh, jump in and talk a little bit about Lyon County. Let me unmute myself there. All right, so um, we do, our animals all come in on the same day on a Thursday. They have to be on the fairgrounds now by 3 p.m. We used to have five, but we're moving our times up because of our fair board wanting those um, weights in to start breaking classes for the first show and throughout the rest of the event. And so that was one of the changes we made this year. Um, so we are, we always weigh two species in right away at the same time. This year we're weighing in beef and swine. And we do have EID um, readers set up at each of those scales. And we do use David Keller's Excel program to read those right in, and it's super efficient. Then we also have a volunteer who is writing down the weights in the fair board's pre-entry program. And they use blue ribbon, probably not a super popular <laughs> um, in 2022. I don't know how many counties are still doing that, but Lyon County enjoys that from a fair board perspective, and we will support them doing that. And so we have the two backups. We have the Excel and the, the electronic version, but also the handwritten version. And um, those have come in handy many times. But uh, after they go across the scale, that is the time we do have family nominated or family tagged animals. And that was something that came up in the last one that it makes it easier for our families that if um, a pig didn't make weight, but they want to show the other pig so they have something to sell. Um, that gives families options, but when they come across the scale, no matter what species, that is the time where you declare and also coordinators confirm breed species and which 4 h -er that goes to. And we do start with, uh, we assign pins. And um, we have a larger fair, um, not probably the largest in the state, but I do, I would see it would it'd be beneficial in any size county because People who are new get to the fair and they don't know when they're to get to their pin. They feel left out. Uh, they don't know what they're doing anyways. And so it's easier to go ahead and assign those by family. And so that's really helped us. I think we probably done that for four years now. It used to be by club and clubs would still leave out new members because maybe those new members never showed up at a meeting and they didn't know who they were. So it's not, um, it, there's just lots of elements into that that helps make showing livestock easier for these families that are getting involved. We are fortunate we have the three scales. I spoke about the two. We also have a platform scale for our sheep and meat goats, and that has improved our ability to weigh those smaller animals in. Even though we had our pig scale, it is in our pig barn, and, and it's very easy for our pigs to weigh. That's what helps make it efficient. Um, the beef scale was terribly inconsistent, depending on which end your goat was on or sheep was on. And so um, each of our scales are left in place um, permanently. They are inspected each year, so that allows us to sell um, from those scales certified each year. The fair board pays to do that. Our vet checks are not really a vet check unless the Kansas Department of Ag requires it or K-State recommends that we do that. Um, like for VSV, we had the entire, um, every animal that came onto the fairgrounds had to go through our veterinary inspection. 
Right now, they are just considered health inspections by our coordinators when they come across the scale. We have found that that's actually kept our livestock more healthy when they arrive at the fair because people understand it's their responsibility to bring healthy animals. If you question something a few days before the fair, they're going to their veterinarian now and having them show us paperwork that says, hey, I've had my vet do this. Um, and so it's really helped our families just take care of that for themselves and not have to be um, in question. But we do have a vet that will allow us to have her on call um, if there is a question when it comes across the scale. So um, that's that's been a, a good change. Sometimes less regulation, less rules uh, makes everyone behave better. So I don't I don't know if I've left anything out that I shared before. Um, and well, yeah, I think that covered unless uh, Brian has any wisdom to add as well here. So as one of our senior uh, members of this Easy. breakout. Easy. Um, however, the one thing I did want to say is that, yes, we have been using the EIDs. We weren't one of the initial counties, uh, but I think we were in the second round of those. We may not get to be, we may not get to use those this year. Uh, the, with the tagging issues, uh, supply issues that we're having, that may be something that we have to rethink how we go ahead and handle the livestock. We may be going back to a big chief tablet and making things work. Uh, it'll happen. We'll make it work and it'll be, it'll be well, but it is very nice to be able to go ahead and use those, scan them in, scan the weights in, be able to sort things very quickly, very efficiently as we do that to very break the classes. Yeah, yeah you're exactly right. And it's, um, they're working through the whole tag issue on supply right now. So it's um, hopefully that we get some good news. It's, they've been telling us every week that they're shipped and they're not. So uh, hopefully we're, um, yeah, we're kind of at the mercy of some of the supply chain right now on that. So I know some of you are in the, the software systems. And so we'll just, we'll just see, I guess um, we should know more within a week or two where we're at for all the small animal tags as well, in terms of just availability for all animals in the state to use that or not. So, okay. I would, you know, if you have a, a supply chain issue, um, we were very fortunate. One of our feed yards in Scott County had um, EID tags and it was from a defunct natural program and they just gave us like 150 tags. Um, that mm -hmm. might be something if, if you don't need the official Kansas State tag, but you need an EID tag is to contact some of your, your local feed yards and see if they could help you out with that. Um, you know, it's got it's got its own number. It can be scanned and all that. It's just not, and it's just the little button. But you know, it, it's going to help us get through this year. Yeah, actually, did have that. Actually, did have that offered from a local producer here already. Mm -hmm. um, hadn't told Grin that yet, but uh, that is one of those things that it'd be sort of an odd looking thing having a having an EID dangling that way on a pig. So Joel might frown on that if he saw it in the show ring. Uh, you know, at this point. Anything we can do to make it easy and get them tagged, you know, as, I mean, as long as it's not like a big honking tag, I mean, like I said, a lot of them are the button tags. Honestly, that won't make a difference at all. Considering our, our current state 4-H EID tag for pigs is fairly big in size anyway. So, okay. Yeah. We did virtual tagging anyways. This is no big deal. We'll yeah, this is, this is something easy to work through. Yeah. If tagging's the biggest deal at your fair, whoa. Yeah. yeah. Let's chat. I can help. <laughs> so any any questions or comments um, I from our any of the participants that are on or or things that, that you've come across on these particular areas? So one of the things that came up, I'll may start with and maybe I'll throw this to all the participants. So we had some discussion last session on the amount of days animals are checked in. Certainly a number of fairs capture those within a morning or an evening. Uh, there is some fairs that due to their schedule allow all four species to be weighed the first day, then maybe just the second, two of those species also the second day just due to the scheduling and allowing families to bring all their livestock in to be checked in or do it over two days. I'd be curious uh, for some of those that haven't uh, you know, uh, that are on to, to uh, indicate if you do allow over a couple days versus one day. Hey, Joel, I will ask that as well, because I was wanted to ask Leonard that 
it seemed odd if you were able to go pick on pigs. Um, you bring your pigs and your sheep in at the same day. You weigh both of them the first day, but the rest of the pigs go through the second day. Is that is that an issue as you start to break classes? Is that an issue if you're looking to sell? Um, you know, is that a concern, or yeah. is that is that day? You know, where everybody goes across the scale the same day, is there an issue? Uh, it was just just a question. I didn't know. Yeah, it, it's probably just bigger picture. It may to me it seems a little odd to be quite honest. But at the same time, you think about it. You know, the animals are going to be hauled in, and they're probably going to shrink a little anyway. Um, and they're all using the same scale, and so it's mm-hmm. probably not going to go out of uh, balance. You would think over that period of time. Um, the reality is, if somebody thought they could get more weight on at home an extra day. I would probably argue you're still going to lose it versus if you brought your pigs the first day or sheep or goats, let them refill after a haul and weigh them the second day. You know, it it just really depends. And maybe because they're hauling in that morning and then have to weigh, they allow that second day for the other three species. I think it was cattle, maybe that they only did the first day because they showed the the night of the second day or one of those species. So um, at the end of the day, I mean, we're only going to be talking about a couple pounds. And if, if that makes a class break difference, then somebody's luckier than they are good, quite honestly. When we talk about the numbers and the breeds and all the things, we, how we break classes at our fairs. So I, I don't think it changes anything. To me, it seems like a lot more work for all the volunteers and superintendents to manage that over two days. But again, what works for somebody may, may be fine. So Yeah, really. I was going, I'm sorry, Corinne. Joel, you'd ask about other fairs. I mean, we weigh everything on the first day when they bring their animals in. Um, well, they bring them in the night before and then the next morning. We'll start with pigs at 7.30, try to get them done quickly. Give about an hour for that, 30 minutes for sheep and goats. And then we go in to, and weigh all our cattle. So yeah. um, that's just how we do it. Everybody weighs the same day, so. Yeah. Yeah, Everybody gets to join in the chaos together, right? So, I mean, absolutely. But, but that, what just, fun is it if it's not chaos? Yeah, and, and part of it is too, you just get through it because there's 10 other activities going on besides livestock, right? I mean, you got photo check in, you have foods, you got all the indoor exhibit check ins. And as, as we spread our livestock one out at different times or over, I mean, it just starts to conflict with all of our other. You know, that's back to the whole scheduling of what works in each individual counties and when people check in indoor exhibits as well. Yeah. Okay. I, I'd ask this um, from, the, from the scale side. I mean, we can get into, a, you know, it is rules, you know, in Kansas, if, it, if we have a point of sale, you know, a certification of a scale. And I know that can get a little bit varied. I mean, oftentimes scales do get certified, whether it's a day before or sometime that year or sometime. Again, I people just gotta do what they're comfortable with. I mean, there is rules, so we have to be certainly aware of them. If you have a complaint filed uh, either by a locker as example or a purchaser, they don't trust that weight or a family you know, if they question, you just make sure you have, you know, test weights, you know, things or things that you can at least verify rather than Joel jumping on the scale and say, hey, I think I weigh so much. And yeah, it's within three pounds, so it must be good, right? So isn't that the typical way we grab a kid that knows his weight <laughs> and say, hey, how close is it? So you've uh, never you really lived, it. Joel. You've never really lived until you've had a dad bring a 25 pound weight Mm -hmm. and tell us our scales are off and then put that on there and it weighs exactly 25 pounds (laughs) i say i have a dad that has several a couple of 50 pound weights and we do the same thing he tested every year every year before we start he tested so like but it is i mean you think about a trigger point right you know right or wrong the scales are a trigger point for potential issues. And so just need to make sure we have everything is accurate and, and things are set up so we avoid situations that do arise. So, yeah. Well, like you said, though, it's for lightweight animals that it becomes the real issue. You, yes. you cannot pick which class you're in until everything's weighed and you know 
what the weights are. So um, it's a moot point to worry about five pounds or two pounds or whatever. But if you're not going to make weight, that's the families that I think question. Yeah. So that's why I do want them to be accurate. Yes. In terms of other people on here, do you guys, uh, is it generally checking in morning or checking in the evening? Because I know that's a mixture of, of uh, times. And I guess has, what, what have people, have people changed to fit a better schedule of, of families or heat? I'll say that at the request of our swine coordinators, we moved to the middle of the afternoon sounds really weird we fortunately also have a have a wash rack right at the end of the scale so most of the time they'll go ahead and run through the wash rack and and weigh them and run them back to the wash rack and then put them in the bins mm -hmm. silence this was like, I had to give a lecture in our nutrition class today. 80 students, man, it was like pulling teeth to get anything out of them. So I know we have a couple of Pot County people, Dick Dugan, Elvin Stetsman, my fellow swine superintendent. Any wise words of wisdom from Pottawatomie County? The only thing that I would, I guess, add to it is, you know, if you're going to change it or move something or just the location, you know, communicate, communicate, communicate. Because you have, you know, kind of like, um, I think it was Lyon Counties, you know, fair week, I am not bringing any extra weight to carry around. <laughs> you know, I don't need anything extra. If it could be moved closer to my campsite, it would be better. So that, I find that odd. But anytime, if you're going to you know, we're going to weigh in swine here. We're going to weigh in beef here. If it does get changed, make sure you communicate that uh, throughout the barns uh, so people know. And, and you know, again, there's going to be some first-time showers or first-time exhibitors. You know, try to seek those out. Um, you know, if you got a, you know, a, someone that's done it for years, you know, say, hey, make sure we take care of that family. This is their first year. Make sure they get up to the, to the scales. Yeah, that's exactly right. If you change a schedule, again, people, we get to be creatures of habit because it's repetitive, right? Especially at the fair, you know, your check-in process, you have your mental kind of list to go through. And like at ours, uh, yeah, we do pigs, you know, we do them all in the morning on a, on a Thursday morning. And so animals can come in the night before, but pigs start at, uh, I believe, 8 o'clock, 8 or 8.30, we, we go through those. If somebody doesn't get there yet, you know, the same scales used for pigs and then we move it to use it for the sheep and goats, but it's all of, you know, 20 feet away, you know, we'll come back and, and help out if a family wasn't able to get there on time that morning. And then the cattle, they're weighed adjacent in a cattle scale. And again, kind of our working area is kind of close together for all this. So we make sure that most of the animals are done before we start beef, which is later in the morning and weigh them in and then do a heifer check in uh, where the superintendent basically goes around to the stalls and just verifies. And we don't uh, haven't brought up breeding heifers up to the, the scale just to decrease the, the traffic. It's not a very wide area. It's kind of a wide alleyway, quite honestly, where we have to set it up. So just from a safety standpoint too, we don't bring all those heifers up. So, One of the best things I've done as an agent, um, because this does revolve around the schedule, um, and I start getting questions each year, um, you know, the end of March or the beginning of March, people are like, what's the fair schedule? What's the fair schedule? And we're always so afraid to put anything in print until the fair book's actually printed, right? Um, but with uh, the ability to send out a bulk email, I actually send out I break down the fair and I try and highlight the big changes and I put the whole fair schedule in that email to everyone on 4-H online. And it was to everyone. It wasn't just to those enrolled in livestock. It was overall. And of course saying it's tentative, but by this time, our office has fine tooth comb this. We've gone over it with the fair board. Our coordinators have approved it. Those meetings were back in January. And so for the most part, 
it's it's fairly predictable what our fair schedule will be for 2022. And sharing that in an email that narrates all that right now helps people plan, and our fair's not till August, so it helps people plan their summer and not worry so much or stress out about that component of it. So um, if you if you narrate those changes, you know, as you have those conversations, this is a tip when you want to go to this scale, do this. Those are great insights to share. It makes people feel like they're um, part of the family. One thing that we did in Puck County, we uh, so instilled uh, junior superintendent and mm. especially in the swine because it's kind of chaotic. And it's been real helpful. We got several families step up and they help get the pigs to push the scale. You're never looking for a sorting board because they've got them in their hands and it's been it's been absolutely wonderful in our county. So that's something you'll if you're having trouble finding people that need help, you know, some junior superintendents are a really good way to go. Yeah, Elvin, great point. Um yeah, uh, we do that in Pottawatomie County, have a lot of junior superintendents gives them some leadership, gives them something to put down on their state scholarships and all the other things. And we turn responsibility over. Uh, Elvin and I are good at delegating to uh, those. And, uh, and they, they enjoy it. Those senior members, um, those younger kids look up to them more than they're ever gonna look up to us as superintendents. And so it, it really provides a unique opportunity to get some free labor and, and you can have some kids that really want to do it and, and do a high quality job to help that. Thanks, Elvin. I forgot to mention that. So, Does anybody else do junior superintendents in any of the livestock species? Maybe just ask that. I see Lyon County is shaking yes. We don't, we don't call them junior superintendents, but they're helpers in the, for the livestock mm -hmm. species, so. Sure. They also have to help during tagging our junior superintendents. Mm -hmm. Labette County does a junior fair board and they help with all different areas and coordinate a few events. Very good, yeah. If your county doesn't do a junior board or junior superintendents or however you wanna term them, that may be something to bring up. I know it's, uh, it's really good for the youth and uh, gives them some, a way to, to uh, stay involved and certainly provides that extra labor that we need for check-in and even at the show, um, you know, when they balance around their show schedule. So, yep. And I All know right. this is Richard. Yep, oh, I was just gonna add, not only for livestock, but also other projects. My son and uh, one of his buddies, they were the superintendents for woodworking. They did work woodworking all throughout 4-H. And, and again, I, I, you know, second Joel, that's a great opportunity to let the kids own the fair. And that's what it's about is the kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Any last things? Uh, we're, we're right up to our time and I would suspect pretty quick, we're gonna get a message that we're gonna get kicked back to the main room. Um, any last comments or questions or anything anybody would like to contribute? All right, if not, uh, what we can do is, it, it, I believe everybody in the bottom right portion of your screen should have a leave room button. And uh, if you wanna go ahead and, and do that, that'll send us back to the main session that we'll do our wrap up in. Thank you very much.